Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video today we're gonna start with uh, Horse MD Marcelo De Angelis, who failed to make the classic physique weight cap today. And one thing is for sure, this is definitely, probably, most likely the last time we're gonna see this guy in classic physique. Will he make the weight? He probably will. I mean, as you can see, comment there from Anton Valiant, he says, find a sauna, start jumping and spitting. <laughs> and even though this sounds funny, we should be worried about this guy. This much weight, six and a half pounds in one day. That is a lot of weight to, to, to lose in one day. That's gonna mean a lot of dehydration. And that can be very dangerous. I mean, many, many bodybuilders are doing these kind of protocols, but, you know, it's not safe, especially if you, if you do a lot of diuretics. So I hope he has proper guidance, but there is a whole bunch of techniques that he can do. A sauna is definitely one of the, one of the things, probably the, the most effective one. And as Anton says, spitting, but if your mouth is not producing saliva because it's so dehydrated, you start chewing a gum, which will make you salivate. And he's probably gonna go through like 10 packets, even more, uh, of gum in that one day. Also, there are other things that are more dangerous, like uh, salt bath, drinking distilled water, and of course going crazy with diuretics. So he can make the weight, no doubt, he can. It's just a matter of how safe can he be while he's doing this. So as you can see in this post right here, it says, after being hospitalized and losing 9 kilos, so he lost 9 kilos after being in a hospital for like a week, not even eating, not training. He got out of the hospital and he decided to compete still at the show that he was planning originally. So they say, at just a few days out, Marcelo has been disqualified for not making the weight. He weighed 104 kilos and 182 centimeters. The cutoff at that weight is 101 kilo. And Marcelo thought that he's 185 centimeters, which would mean that his cutoff is 109. And he says that he has until tomorrow to make weight a 6.6 .6 pounds drop, and uh, if he does that, he's going to be allowed to compete. So why did I say he's never going to compete again as a classic physique guy? It's because he lost 20 pounds in a hospital and still couldn't make the weight. So he thought originally that he's taller, so he thought he can be 109 kilos, and he came at 103, so he probably didn't do anything crazy these past couple of days to try to, to lose the weight. He probably tried to be as heavy as possible, because he thought he can easily make the weight, but actually he needs to lose 6.5 pounds. I mean, this is weird, because he thought he was 3 centimeters, which is more than 1 inch taller than he actually is. I know scales are different, but that much... 3 centimeters makes quite a bit of a difference. So he, if he thought that he was 185 and that he's way below the weight cap, he probably didn't even try to do some things that bodybuilders usually do when they need to make the weight cap, such as lifting yourself a little bit, you know, not really standing on your fingers, but just a little bit, so much that uh, nobody is going to notice that you did that. And another thing is putting a ton of gel in your hair. Yeah, his hair is not exactly super thick, but if he expected this, he would probably grow it. And as I said, put a ton of hair gel in it to make it taller and uh, thicker and harder, so it wouldn't press too much when they measure him. And uh, it would give him maybe like another centimeter, which would mean like a kilo or two. He probably could have measured at 183, 184, if he really wanted to. If he thought that he was 185, at some point he was measured somewhere in 185, he probably could have been measured here at 183, 184. It's a shame he didn't do that, now he needs to suffer like crazy for one day. Those protocols when you need to lose so much weight, man, those are some hardcore protocols. You don't want to go through that ever for, for no reason, but sometimes when you are this close... To, to achieving your goal, you're gonna do it, he did so much before, you guys know that bodybuilders are crazy people, he's going to go through with this for sure, he's going to suffer like crazy, and I just hope he's going to stay safe, I hope he has a proper guidance, but as you can see here in this video, his back does look really big, but when he turns around, you can see that he looks kind of flat, so maybe he won't even win this show if he makes the weight. Regan Grimes made the weight at the Mr. Olympia and he was like 9th, so there are other bodybuilders who are going to weigh as much as him and they will be fresh, not tortured a day before the show, who weren't hospitalized a week before the show, so this is probably not gonna be an easy win for him, not even close. And if he makes the weight this time, and I'm sure he will, he will never do classic physique again, because he didn't make the weight even though he was hospitalized and lost 20 pounds in a week, you know? 
So yeah, this is definitely not a division for him. Chris Bumstead was right when he said, I have no idea how are you gonna make the weight. And even though it seemed crazy, it was because he had his measurements wrong. He's not that tall, he's not that light, he's definitely an open bodybuilder. If he gets sick and he doesn't eat anything for a week, stays in hospital, dehydrates himself, risks his life, somehow he can manage to make the weight cap, but the question is still, is he gonna win or not? If you consider all that, does it make sense for him to stay in Classic? Absolutely not. The only way that I can see him staying in Classic is if he wants to downsize because of, for example, health reasons, and he goes completely off of everything. He stays natural the entire year, and two months before the show, he takes some fat burners and maybe some uh, hardening agents and shows up, you know, maybe that's the only way, but I don't think he's gonna do that, I wouldn't like him to do that, I would like to see him fulfill his maximum potential and that is going to be in open category. How will he do at this show if he makes the weight? I'm really curious to see what he's gonna look like, but I don't think he's going to be at his best after going through all this trouble, his body is gonna look uh, tortured, flat, he's not gonna look good, you know, so I don't expect much from him, and I think this is going to be the last time we see him in classic physique. What do you guys think? All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is very interesting, at least to me. It is Chris Bumstead, quote-unquote, opening up about his cycle. The dose that he says that he's using, and the number of compounds also, is, uh, is really small, really tiny, kind of unbelievable. And I don't know if it is even possible. So I'm going to play this video for you guys and then I'm going to tell you what I think about it. My supplements have been very low this year. Numbers are around 200 that I've been doing and I come off once a year completely. And then I've been doing very low dose, 200 a week. And then after that, I'm going to go up to like 500 maybe. And that's going to be my peak off season. All right. So basically what he says is, okay, guys, I'm just going to tell you right away. I don't believe in what he's saying. No, no. Last time when he spoke about his cycle, he said that he was using 500 mg of test uh, and that's it. Now he even lowered it. Now he says that his maximum that he took in this off season is 200 mg of testosterone and that is it. And this is what he looks like on that much. And that is TRT basically. I mean the levels of testosterone in his body are something that he could have naturally, basically, a 200 mg test. So do you believe that this is uh, attainable naturally? And do you believe that his off-season didn't even start yet? He says his off-season is going to start in like a week after he does the blood test and then he's gonna go uh, his full-blown off-season which is going to be 500 mix of tests per week and that's gonna be it. I honestly don't believe this. As you can hear him, he was really cautious about what he's gonna say in this video. First of all, because he has a lot of influence, like he has a ton of followers, a lot of kids are following him, so he is worried about what he's gonna tell them, what kind of messages he's gonna send. Also, he is a part owner of a large supplement company, and if he can tell us, if he can convince us that he built his physique without, almost without completely using steroids, and if he keeps constantly talking about all the supplements that he is taking, all these kids are gonna believe that this kind of physique is attainable for somebody with better genetics without using big amounts of drugs, which is hardly possible. I mean, I know he has the autoimmune system disease and he doesn't want to do a lot of, a lot of stuff, you know, big dosages, but still, that low, looking like this, that low, mm, I don't think so. I really doubt this. As I said, he has two good reasons to say stuff like this. First, because of his influence, and second, because of his company. He's doing the same thing that bodybuilders used to do back in the, I don't know, 70s, 80s, 90s even. They didn't speak about uh, gear too much, and they were promoting all these supplements. And, uh, you know, that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to make money. And if he told you the truth, and the truth is you can't really make a great physique like this without, without gear. No, you cannot do it. I'm sure most of you guys know that supplements are a luxury. There are supplements who really help a lot, like a pre-workout, that's definitely a big help, like protein is a great uh, uh, replacement for meals, stuff like creatine is also kind of helpful, uh, BCAAs have their purpose, but comparing, you know, 20 mix of test plus all the supplements in the world compared to one gram of test without any supplements, there is a big difference. One gram of test is going to help you quite a bit more. 
Look guys, you can replace whey protein with other protein sources. It is probably possible to get all your creatine needs through beef, if you're eating a lot of beef. It probably won't happen, but maybe it can, etc. But here is a supplement that I personally couldn't go without. I mean, there is nothing like a good pre-workout. And this pre-workout, Vintage Blast, is absolutely killing it in sales on Amazon. This is my favorite flavor, Peach Lemonade. It kind of tastes like nasty. And it's really working so well. I mean, it got my training to a higher level than ever, really. You guys know that I compete and last year in my off season, I tried not using any kind of pre-workout because I wanted to save my caffeine receptors for prep. But my training was suffering because of that. This off season, I was taking pre-workout almost before every important workout and it was definitely a huge help. So I definitely suggest you trying something like this. If you don't want this flavor, you can try any other one. The new flavor, Strawberry Kiwi, is really amazing as well. So guys, I definitely recommend this product. If you want to support me and my channel too, try this product out. Go in the link in the description of this video and use the code DIVAN for a 12% discount. Put that aside and look at his physique right here. This right here was, as he says, either on 200 mg of test or completely off. Do you believe that this guy, Chris Bumstead, can look like this in the off-season? You know how he looks on stage, you know how he looked and when he was at his peak off-season before his autoimmune system disease, when he was blasting gear. Oh, you're probably wondering, was he ever blasting gear? Was he ever using 2, 3, 4 compounds at the same time? Let me show you. When I was young, I used to run a typical cycle that most bodybuilders would have, typical amount of compounds, like four or five compounds throughout a prep. You heard it, not even two or three, not three, four, four or five compounds at the same time. And he looked the way he looked. Now he looks better than ever. And he's almost natural. He has basically natural, higher, a little bit, not, not, not over the natural limit, but like high-end natural levels. I don't know exactly what his levels are, of course, but at 200 mix of test, you can expect something like that. And uh, with that, would he look like this? Look at a guy, he's lean, he's big, he's full, he's round, he's hard. Can he look like this? Having basically natural, high-end natural testosterone levels. And all these photos are from, from this year, basically. I don't even want to say he's off-season because he doesn't even call it off-season. Because he was in such low amounts. Do you believe this, guys? Do you buy it? Me personally, I don't. Of course, I have no idea, absolutely no idea whatsoever what he is taking, but I can make a pretty good guess. So I would say at least 500 mix of tests. That's not very high, but it's not something you can produce naturally. So I would say 500 mix of tests. On top of that, I would say probably some Anavar, low dose, like 50 mix of, of Anavar per day. It's not really something that's going to cause you health problems. It's a really low side effect kind of drug. It's for women mostly, but men can also get uh, great results from it. It's a little bit more expensive, but I'm sure Chris can afford it. And if he really is uh, careful about his health, that's the kind of stuff that he's going to use on top of testosterone. And the most logical compound that I'm pretty sure he's using, I don't know for a fact, but I think it's a pretty safe assumption, he's gotta be taking some GH, at least like 3 units, 2-3 units a day, it's gonna help him recover from everything, it's gonna help him stay leaner, it's gonna help with anti-aging, it is expensive, it is quite expensive, but he can definitely afford it, and there is absolutely no reason for him not to take it, he's not gonna talk about that on his YouTube channel, he doesn't want the kids to hear what he's really taking, so he gives us those low numbers, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. And if he's doing what I said he was doing, that's also very low stuff for somebody who is the best in the world in classic physique. So that would definitely mean that he has great genetics and genetics to be a top open pro if he really wanted to. And, you know, he maybe he wants to do it someday, but with his health problems, he probably will not. Anyways, guys, tell me what do you think? Do you buy what he said? Do you believe that he's only using that? That he's uh, sometimes completely off of everything and sometimes on only two mix of tests? I personally don't think that's the case. I don't think that makes any sense. But, you know, he said it and I wanted to comment on it. So, guys, whatever you think, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.